<laughs> All right. Um, but if any matters do counsel have to take up with the court? Mr. Boutrous. Uh, two things I wanted to put on the court's radar screen um, relating to the discovery issues. The proponents filed a motion to amend uh, Judge Spiro's January 8 order to expand the core group for purposes of discovery so that it would now reach all the way to Massachusetts. And um, we have filed our opposition to that motion. The, as I understand it, proponents are withholding something, uh, they're withholding documents that would otherwise be responsive based on their expanded core group. Um, the second discovery issue that relates to that is we filed a, a motion a few minutes ago, so I know the court and counsel haven't, haven't had a chance to review it, seeking to reopen Mr. Prentice's deposition. He's the executive director of protectmarriage.com. Um, we received about 20,000 pages of documents from the proponents um, over the last week in response to Judge Spiro's order. And we would like the opportunity to depose uh, Mr. Prentice on those documents. He is um, mentioned, in, and there's at least 400 or so that we've identified so far where he is a principal person on those documents. And we're trying to narrow that down, but we thought it would streamline things if we do end up calling him as a witness to spare the court are walking through all these documents if we could if we could reopen the deposition. Some of the documents at, at a bare minimum cast serious doubt on his prior statements in his deposition disclaiming connections to various other groups. So we think they are very relevant. Um, so those were those things have all just been filed on our side this morning and, and we thought it might make sense on these issues for Judge Spiro to take take a look at them because they relate to the proceedings that we last had before Judge Spiro. Well, let's see that first matter that you raised, the motion Ray, uh, Magistrate Judge Spiro's discovery order. There, there are two, let me, let me see if I understand what it is you're referring to specifically. Um, There is one motion which seeks to increase the core group by adding, I believe it's four persons, three or four persons, a Mr. Peterson, Richard Peterson, a Mr. Rob Worthlin, who I assume is the individual we've seen in these uh, television advertisements, and a John Doe. Now, is it that motion that you're referring to? Yes, Your Honor. And so I think it's document 474, um, 474 on the PACER system. Right. Now, there's also a motion challenging um, Magistrate Judge Spiro's general discovery order. That's separate. That's correct, Your Honor. I'm, uh, I think I'm ready to rule on that latter motion based upon the papers. And I don't think uh, we probably need to hear anything further with respect to that. But have you had an opportunity to file a reply to the to docket number 474? Yes, Your Honor, we filed that this morning. All right. So <clears throat> why don't I take a look at that uh, and either decide it myself or refer it to Magistrate Judge Spiro. And are those then the two matters that you wish to take up with the court and have the court rule upon? The Prentice deposition and the uh, motion that's embodied in docket number 474. That's correct, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cooper, I assume you want to reply to the motion to reopen the Prentice uh, deposition. Um, we haven't seen that. It's, I've just now been. Sorry? I, was, I was advised when you were advised that it has been filed. Right. We, have, we haven't seen it and uh, would like an opportunity to look at it and put a, put a uh, response into the court. We can hey, do when do you think you'll be able to do that? Do it promptly, Your Honor. Uh, uh, hey, promptly means when? Later than tomorrow. All right. So I'll have it tomorrow morning. All right. 
Well, I'll take a look at it or send it to the magistrate. Any other preliminary matters that we need to take up this time? Hearing none, who's the next witness? Very well, Mr. Herrera. Good morning, Your Honor. Plaintiff interveners call Mayor Jerry Sanders to the stand. Who? Mayor Jerry Sanders. By the way, <clears throat> I read a deposition taken by one of your deputies, a Mr. Flynn. I think he needs some counseling on proper objections in a deposition. I think Th you really need to review that deposition, Mr. Herrera, as the leader of your office and do a little woodshedding of some of the lawyers. Okay. We'll take a look at it, Your Honor. All right. Pardon me? Uh, Jerry Sanders. S A N D E R S. Jerry, J E R R Y. Good morning, Mr. Sanders. Good morning. You are currently the mayor of San Diego, is that correct? Yes, I am. What political party are you affiliated with? I'm a Republican. How long have you been mayor, Mayor Sanders? I've been mayor for four years. What term are you in? I'm in my second term. Prior to becoming mayor, did you have a career in public service? Yes, I did. And what was your first job in public service? Uh, I went on to the San Diego Police Department as a recruit in uh, 1973. And can you give us uh, a brief description of the positions you held in the San Diego Police Department? I can. I uh, graduated from the police academy in August of 1973, uh, became a patrol officer uh, in the city of San Diego, working uh, in many different areas and divisions of the city. I was promoted to agent in 1978 uh, and then to sergeant in 1979, uh, where I had uh, a role in uh, policing squads of officers uh, in different parts of the city, also some administrative assignments. I became a lieutenant in 1981. Uh, had a geographical area. Uh, I was also had assignments as the SWAT commander, uh, as the director of the San Diego Police Academy. In 1986, I was promoted to captain, uh, where I uh, held two assignments, uh, two geographical areas in the city of San Diego, where I was responsible for policing of about 160,000 people uh, in each of those. I was promoted to commander in 1990, uh, where I had overall command of half of the city. Uh, and then also served as an acting assistant chief uh, in charge of internal affairs. I uh, was a pro promoted to assistant chief uh, where I had assignments in assistant uh, in internal affairs uh, and some administrative assignments. And then I was um, promoted to chief of police in 1993 and retired in 1999. And between 1999 when you retired and 2005 when you became mayor, did you have any other positions in public service? <clears throat> yes, I did. I was uh, the president and CEO of the San Diego County United Way from 1999 until uh, about 2002. Uh, the United Way of San Diego uh, took workplace donations and uh, distributed those to a wide variety of health and human services throughout the San Diego uh, region, uh, making sure we funded priorities for uh, children, adults, uh, all sorts of different issues. Uh, I was then uh, asked, after I left United Way, uh, to uh, reconstitute the American Red Cross board in San Diego, which had been uh, removed by the national chapter. Uh, I uh, went on to become the chair of the board uh, and served with the Red Cross for uh, about two years uh, prior to going on the national board of directors uh, uh, right before I ran for election. Mayor Sanders, are you gay? No, I'm not. Are you married? Yes, I am. For how long have you been married? I've been married for uh, 16 years to my wife, Rana Sampson. Do you have any children? I do. How many? I have two daughters, uh, Lisa, 26, and Jamie, 23. Are your daughters uh, from your marriage with Rana or from a previous marriage? They're from a previous marriage. And you've only been married two times? 
I've been married twice, the first time for 14 years. Are Lisa and Jamie lesbian or straight? Uh, Jamie is straight. Uh, Lisa is a lesbian. What was your relationship like with uh, Lisa when she was growing up? Well, Lisa uh, was my first daughter. Uh, we had a very strong relationship. Excuse me. Uh, she was basically my shadow. Um, I was very busy on the police department, obviously, with my career as a lieutenant when she was born. Uh, but every weekend, uh, we did yard work together um, when she could barely walk. Uh, we'd go to Home Depot together. She probably knows more about Home Depot than most kids. Uh, we would uh, go to the dump together uh, on my promise that I'd buy her a donut, uh, and she could watch me remove all the trash from the truck. Um, we were pretty much inseparable over weekends uh, until she went away to college, and I actually had uh, both daughters uh, every weekend uh, from the time I was divorced until they both went away to college. And how did you uh, first learn that Lisa was a lesbian? Uh, Lisa called us in her... <laughs> trying not to look at my daughter right now. Uh, Lisa called me in her sophomore year of college. Uh, said that she wanted to come home and talk with my wife and I. Had something she needed to discuss with us. Uh, when I asked her what it was about, um, she said that she would prefer to wait till she got home. Uh, when she came home, uh, she sat down with us and uh, told us she was a lesbian and that she was in a lesbian relationship. And what was your reaction? Well, it was uh, one where I felt overwhelming love. Um, I realized how difficult this was for her. I realized how difficult it was to uh, tell your parents that you were uh, a lesbian. Um, <clears throat> I uh, told her that I felt very strongly that uh, we loved her more than we ever had, um, and that uh, we would be there to support her in every step of the way. But I also told her that I thought I had concerns uh, and that I was, I thought it was very tough on gay people uh, in society. Were you upset at all? No, I was very proud of her for coming and letting us know. And when you say you were concerned, why were you concerned? Well, I've been a police officer for 26 years. Uh, during that time, I had seen what happened to people who came out uh, who had uh, either a gay or lesbian relationship. Uh, I had uh, go back to when I was a young police officer. Uh, we had a sergeant on our squad. This is in the early 70s. Uh, San Diego was very conservative at that time, very good sergeant. Uh, he came to us and told us that he was gay. Uh, and it wasn't long after that. Uh, and I had talked with several squad members. We still respected him tremendously. But it wasn't long after that he, that he left the police department, literally driven out. Were I, uh, oh, I sorry, also, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, I also... Um, through the years have seen violence against the gay community simply because people were gay. Uh, we had series of crimes that would occur in uh, the part of San Diego that had a lot of gay people there, uh, the gay bashings, the robberies. Uh, we had a death occur in the early 90s uh, that was part of a series of that. Um, I had seen a lot of that type of thing uh, and heard the slurs and heard the, the comments that people make. Mr. Mayor, when you first ran for mayor, did you take a position on the issue of marriage equality? I did. And what was your position? My position that I thought civil union was a fair alternative. And why did you take that position? Uh, number one, uh, to put it in context, uh, I was running during a very difficult time in San Diego's history. Uh, we were being investigated by uh, a range of uh, federal authorities, uh, by the SEC, by uh, the U.S. Attorney, by the Attorney, um, the District Attorney. Uh, we're facing huge financial problems, and I felt that in the context of the election campaign, that the issues of gay marriage were not something that the city of San Diego or I could have an impact on. Uh, I also was a Republican uh, and felt that um, civil unions was a fair alternative um, to marriage. Did there come a time when you changed your position on yes. the issue of marriage equality? Yes, I did. And when was that? It was in uh, September of 2007. Um, the city of San Diego 
the city council uh, passed a resolution to file an amicus brief um, on behalf of the city of San Diego supporting uh, the city of San Francisco in a lawsuit. Uh, and that came to my desk and I had to make the decision whether to veto or whether to sign the resolution. And what was your decision? My decision was to sign the resolution. Did you make a public announcement to explain the reasons for your decision? I did. And was that announcement videotaped? Uh, yes, it was. Is it your understanding that that uh, videotape is widely available? Uh, it was on YouTube. Um, I received uh, letters and emails from around the world uh, talking about seeing that on YouTube. Uh, Your Honor, at this point, I'd like to play Plaintiff's Exhibit uh, 186, which is a video recording of the announcement. Well, Arlene, are we ready or are we waiting or are we? All right. Uh, does anybody else have anything to put up here? I knew there were some more. Probably a couple more will just toss it up if you want. With me this afternoon is my wife, Rana. Uh, I'm here to announce, uh, I'm here this afternoon to announce that I will sign a resolution that the city council passed yesterday directing the city attorney to file a brief in support of gay marriage. My plan has been reported, that has been reported publicly was to veto the resolution so that I feel like I owe San, all San Diegans right now an explanation for this change of heart. During the campaign two years ago, I announced that I did not support gay marriage and instead supported civil unions and domestic partnerships. I have personally wrestled with that position ever since. My opinions on this issue have evolved significantly as I think the opinions of millions of Americans from all walks of life have. In order to be consistent with the position I took during the mayoral election, I intended to veto the council resolution. As late as yesterday afternoon, that was my position. The arrival of the resolution to sign or veto in my office late last night <clears throat> Please excuse us. forced me to re, uh, reflect and search my soul for the right thing to do. I've decided to lead with my heart, which is probably obvious at the moment, to do what I think is right and to take a stand on behalf of equality and social justice. The right thing for me to do is sign this resolution. For three decades, I've worked to bring enlightenment, justice, and equality to all parts of our community. As I reflected on the choices I had before me last night, I just could not bring myself to tell an entire group of people in our community they were looking toward me. Yes, Lizzie, the less deserving of the rights and responsibilities of marriage than anyone else, simply because of their sexual orientation. A decision to veto this resolution would have been inconsistent with the values I've embraced over the past 30 years. I do believe it's time for change and the changing times and new life experiences and different opinions. I think that's a natural and it's certainly true in my case. Two years ago, I believed that civil unions were a fair alternative. Those beliefs in my case have changed. 
the concept of separate but equal. Uh, the concept of a separate but equal institution is not something I can support. I acknowledge that not all members of our community will agree or perhaps even understand. my decision today. All I can offer them is I'm trying to do what I believe is right. I have close family members and friends who are a member of the gay and lesbian community. Those folks include my daughter Lisa, as well as members of my personal staff. <coughs> I want for them the same thing that we all want for our loved ones, 